What's going on fishing buddies? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna grill some pompano on the charcoal Weber. Grilling pompano is one of my favorite ways to eat these guys. There is a process to prepare them. When cleaning them, there's something very important you gotta remember. And then after that, it's pretty easy. But when I first started doing this, I didn't really know how to do it. Started watching YouTube videos on it. And this process is helpful for really any fish when you're grilling them. But it's a great way to enjoy the pompano guys uh, instead of just maybe pan searing it or oven baking it. You get the old charcoal grill fired up and enjoy your catch. Let's get it out there. We are almost there guys, the spring run. And what's gonna happen, what to expect right before the spring run hits is you're gonna start catching a lot of little pompano. These guys are gonna be like barely legal, undersized. You'll start picking those off first. Then what's gonna happen is the breeders are gonna start coming out of the bays. So those are the ones you wanna grill, guys. Those big like 16, 17 inch to the fork, just thick tank-like pompanos. You'll get a big nice fillet off those guys and they're perfect for the grill. So you wanna take advantage of that. And like I said, what's gonna happen is you'll start picking off the little ones and then you'll start picking off those big breeders, like maybe one, possibly two a trip, depending on how long you're gonna be out there. Those big boys, they're not running in huge schools. Like you're not gonna come across like a school of 15 breeders. The school will be a bunch of the smaller pompanos with maybe one or two breeders mixed in. And then after that, you basically just gotta get lucky. You gotta have the right bait, the right color float out there, be in the right spot. And if you go enough, you will pick one off. So the first thing you have to do before you grill a pompano is catch a pompano. Here's some footage of this morning where I got lucky and I picked off one of those big boys. Oh yeah, oh yeah, little rod. Little rod got smashed. Is he still on there? Yeah, he ran in. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. Little rod up close. I was just checking the water temp. Oh man, this is a good fight. That's a pompano. That's a pompano. Good fight on the eight foot six. Oh yeah, eight foot six, baby. Up close. Naked hook, come here, come here. Naked hook, a little piece of shrimp. There he is, that's a tank and a keeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah guys. All right, I'm gonna throw this guy in the cooler and get that line right back out there. We'll get this guy measured up in a second. Mm. Come here, good buddy. Hadn't seen you in a minute. This guy, we are in Florida well over my 12 inch mark he's around 15 16 inches stud popping out guys to start the morning we've been here about five minutes this guy is just super thick too he will be dinner tonight i'm hoping to get a few more in the cooler water temp is sitting at 63 degrees caught this guy up close just hugging a sandbar i got three rods out deep because i thought that's where they would be because we are in a lower tide but on a hunch, I threw my little whitey rod up close, hugged that first little sandbar here with just a single hook, no bead, no float, and a piece of shrimp. And that's what caught this guy. When you're out here, guys, it's important not to overlook those key features that are super close to the beach. It's real easy for us to want to throw out deep, especially like in a low tide setting. But I'm always looking for something different when I'm out here. So I have this super close sandbar with a deeper pocket right in front of it. Just judging it by looking at it, I'd say maybe a foot and a half, two feet depth of water. Because it looked different, I wanted to throw a bait in there. And that's been the only spot I've caught a fish. But it is structured. Even in low tide, these fish can get in there. And the best way for me to explain like how to pick your spot, where to put your lines, is look for inconsistencies. Why does the water look different than the water right next to it? I don't know, but I'm putting a line in there. Could be a rip, could be a hole could be a sandbar. Numerous things could be going on underneath the surface that we can't really see. But watching the water, it will give itself away. So right here where these waves are about to break, right here, boom, sandbar. Super close, as you can see. I mean, it's right there, but there's a deep pocket right here in front of it. That's where I put that shrimp. That's where that pompano hit. All right, guys, back at the house. No more action happened, but we got our one fat pompano and i am gonna grill this guy so i thought this would be a cool video to do of how i'm grilling pompano 
First thing we gotta do is get him cleaned up. I use a seven inch sword knife, guys. There's a lot of fillet knives out there on the market. I like sword. They have a bunch of different options. You have serrated blades, nine inch. They have a little small five inch bait knife. Great company, great product. Let's start underneath this fin here and get my first cut and work it around that fin back up towards the head. Then I'll work it right down the spine. And once I get to the end, I kind of lift my knife, get it all the way through there, and then pull out the tail. Just working this knife nice and slow. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can fillet fish a lot faster than me. <laughs> Especially like charter boat captains that are doing this day in and day out. But I definitely take my time with it. I try to preserve all the meat I can. And I find when I'm doing it fast or I have multiple fish to do, I kind of speed things up and I miss a lot of the meat. And you can feel the bones right here. So I'll take my knife, I'll angle it out a bit, get underneath those bones and then get that portion off that we're not eating just to try to save more meat. So instead of cutting straight down, I just angled it out. And we're gonna leave the skin on to grill it. So that's it, that is the filet. That's how it will go on the grill, obviously once I've cleaned it up and dressed it. All right guys, so both filets are off and as you can see, that is a clean fish. We harvested all the meat from that. Just taking our time, working that knife. It's very important to have a very sharp knife. So I did sharpen that before I started. Super clean. You can almost see right through that guy. All right, guys, so I got my two slabs out here. All I'm gonna do is a little salt here. This is the Himalaya pink sea salt just a little bit on there and then I'm gonna blacken this so I'm gonna go with a blackened seasoning whatever you prefer is fine this says blackened redfish magic we're just gonna pretend like it says pompano get some of this on here on the meat side obviously we still got the skin on on the bottom side of this put that in I'm not gonna do too much more of a bronzed. So you'll hear the term like bronzed fish. And what that means is it's blackened seasoning, but just not a lot of it. Like light blackening season is basically what it is. So those guys are pretty much ready to go. I got one more thing I'm gonna do to them. So what I'm gonna do here, I actually got two more things I'm doing. I am gonna get me some pretty thin slices of lemon here just to throw on top, and I'll save this to squeeze on them when everything is done. Really thin slices here, guys. I don't want this to overpower this with lemon, but I do like to cook them with the lemon on, and then again, I'll squeeze some more lemon juice once these guys are ready to eat. And I'll take some butter here with the olive oil and sea salt, little helpings of it, and I'll kind of just throw it on this fish first. So get a little butter on there. And then I'll take my lemon and kind of put it over that butter just to kind of hold it really is what I'm doing. I pre-soaked my charcoal. So I let this soak probably about 20 minutes. I come back, I just hit it one more time on the top just to get some igniter going. And you can use this same procedure with any seasoning on your pompano. It doesn't have to be the blackening. If you want to do like some garlic pepper, a Cajun seasoning, whatever you like, you know, that would be the only difference. The process is the same. So I am cooking some steaks also. So I'm going to get these steaks on here first. Because once that pomp goes on the grill, it's going to be pretty quick. Plus, this is a fresh grill. It's super hot. I want to let those steaks kind of simmer it down a bit.
we want this guy to get up to around 350, 400, somewhere in that range. It's been about three minutes, guys, and as you can see, we've pushed past 350. All right, guys, I got those fillets pulled off. I pulled my ribeyes to the side here. That's what we're gonna be eating tonight. And now I'm gonna slide this pompano right on the grill. Very important, skin side down first. And that's with any fish that you're grilling. Now that I got them on there, I can adjust them a little bit, pull it right out the main heat, and you can see they're already starting to bow up. All right, guys, it's been about five minutes. I am gonna go ahead and flip. And you're basically, all you're doing here, guys, is tightening things up. You get the flip on them. As you can see, the meat is already coming off the skin. That's what you want. Flatten that guy out a bit. Take a look at them. Heat's pretty low. They are tightening up. We are about ready to pull them off, guys. There they are. That is what you want these guys to look like. And you can hear them, they're still sizzling. That is a perfectly charcoal grilled bronze pompano right there, y'all. Bring them right in and go ahead and hit this lemon on them. Wow, they're good and hot. I went ahead and cut these guys in thirds and we'll get everything plated up. There we go, guys. Plated up, ready to go. And what'll happen here, guys, is this meat, this pompano meat, will pull right off of that skin. Perfectly cooked, nice bronzed pompano.